We all know when it comes to gaming, the GPU is really important. We also know what the results would say if we looked up the benchmarks for pairing a newish GPU with, say, a third generation processor. They're going to say the GPU is getting bottlenecked. But if I'm just an average person with a below average CPU and I want to play a couple random new-ish games, is that bottleneck serious enough to make a 2019 or 2020 game unplayable at, say, 1080p, 60fps. Aside from the GPU, how much does the other stuff really even matter from a practical standpoint? Meaning, again, I'm not an enthusiast trying to squeeze every possible frame out of a game just to see if I can do it, but rather an average person who just wants to play and enjoy a video game at a reasonable resolution. What if we had, for example, a $40 computer with a $20 CPU? Well, we're going to try just that. So the system we're running here is just kind of a random build I did just for fun. It's a motherboard that I got for $10. It's the HP Z220 motherboard. Right now it has the i7-3770, which even though it's a third gen processor, it's actually decent. And we have DDR3 RAM, DDR3 1600 megahertz to be exact, with a 2.5 inch SSD, because uh, I'm pretty sure if we go to an HDD, we're going to hit some trouble, but the 2.5 inch SSD is still not as fast as your average M2 drive, which almost everything uses now. So we're still on the lowish end when it comes to components. Now, for the purposes of this test, it would be nice if I I had a new or new-ish GPU. The best one that I have right now is this. It's the GTX 1070, which really isn't bad, and I've used this in other builds to get some decent 1080p gaming going. So we'll see how it does with older hardware in regards to the RAM, CPU, everything else. So I think it'll serve our purpose for this test. But even in order to get this to run, we're going to need some assistance. Uh, first of all, we need to power the 6 plus 2 pin connector, which we don't have that kind of juice on this old lower power PSU. So I'm going to be using the same external power supply and breakout board that I covered in the last video, which was an interesting experiment if you're interested in that. And we will also need the assistance of a riser cable to actually connect this to the motherboard via the PCIe slot. But we'll throw all that together and try some random, not new, but new-ish games, pretty much the ones I always test out, and just generally see how it goes. The system is mostly set up, so right now I'm mainly just connecting the graphics card. As I mentioned, we're hooking up this external power supply to connect to the 8-pin, then we're using this riser cable to connect the actual GPU itself. And while I'm doing that, I should mention that the kind of performance we get depends a lot on the type of game we run. So there's different games that are more CPU heavy, and obviously anything like that isn't going to run as well. But again, we're just running this from a practical standpoint. The average user, I just generally want to see, can our third gen processor and DDR3 memory Will it be enough to just play some random games? So we're quickly going to fire this up and see if it works, and if so, I'll have to install the drivers real quick and then install a couple games on here, then we'll be ready to roll. As you saw, our system's kind of just out in the open, strewn all over the place, but I promised you chair desk, and you're going to get... Chair desk. I don't know exactly how this will go. What I do know is that if I would have planned more carefully, set it up on a chair desk, 
100% success rate. Okay, so the first boot was unsuccessful. I forced shut down, booted up again. This time everything's running. We might have some issues. I've got some old drivers on here from the crappy graphics card I had in there. I'm going to install the drivers for this and, and hopefully going through that process with the clean install option or whatever it is will be enough. I really don't want to reinstall the operating system. We at least have an image, which is good, and it's booting. Again, if this were on a chair desk, we're probably talking a thousand frames per second, 18K resolution, but it just doesn't all physically fit. All right, jumping right in, these are both going to be 2019 games, the same ones I usually use for testing. Starting off with Devil May Cry 5, we have the highest in-game graphical settings, 1080p, and so far it's doing really well. It's holding at a solid 60 frames per second, and that's with a lot of action and even with a lot of camera movement and things going on in the game. I've seen like maybe one or two dips down to 58, but it's that's rare. It's almost a solid 60 across the board. It's playing really well. Feels smooth. Actually, I wouldn't say the older hardware is even holding us back that much. It, it seems to be running pretty well. And like I said, that frame rate is really consistent. Next up, we have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Again, this is a 2019 game, but it is more demanding in terms of hardware requirements. And we're running the highest in-game graphical settings, just like last time. We are still running running at a solid 60 frames, well, very close to 60 frames per second. It, it, it just dips down a little bit between 59 and 60, but it, it's hanging tough even again with a lot of camera movement jumping around, especially for, again, third generation CPU, DDR3 RAM, but I, I'm kind of impressed at what this old hardware can do. So just a reminder again, even though we saw pretty good performance here, depending on what game you want to play, the CPU might have more of an effect, or in this case having an older CPU may have more of a negative effect. I don't have any games specifically like that. The only games I do have are the things I could find for five dollars during Steam sales, which is probably why it's not so difficult for me to run them on this older hardware. But yeah, I was kind of surprised by how good the performance was. Maybe in a future video I'll drop the CPU down even even further, maybe do the same thing but with an i5 or even an i3 and see what kind of results we get. Because while this CPU is old and it is cheap, it's also, it's still an i7, four cores, eight threads, it's really not terrible. But yeah, maybe I'll do that in the future, try something a little crazier. For now though, that's going to be it. As always, I really appreciate you watching and I will catch you later.